Lisa, good evening everyone. Project number six, Bulk of Variety. I think we've all done it, haven't we? Let me confess something. I did Bulk of Variety project about 15 years ago. I started those messages a long time back. For a long time I did the project. I thought I knew Bulk of Variety. I told other people to use Bulk of Variety. But not, I actually didn't know anything about Bulk of Variety. There was so much that I didn't even know that I didn't know. That I didn't know. Until one day when I met the worldwide runner-up of the International Speech Contest. And he expounded to me what vocal variety really meant. And I felt like a little light bulb went off in my head. And here, I'm gonna share with you what I learned from him, and I hope you all find it useful as well. Now, there's two main axes of vocal variety we can think about. The first is the volume you're speaking. You can speak loud, you can speak softly. And the second axis you can think about is how fast you're talking. You can talk fast, or you can talk slow. When you combine these two different dimensions, you actually have four different styles of speaking. Now, each of these styles actually represents one very distinct tool in your toolbox. And you can use each of these tools in order to do something very specific to achieve a very specific goal of yours. Let's start off with this one, talking slowly talking softly. Notice how when I talk slowly and softly, the whole dynamic of the room changes. It makes the speaker seem much more personable, it makes him seem vulnerable, and because of that, you as the audience feel a rap forward with them. You feel connected to them, you feel like you like them, and you want to see them succeed. What are some very common places where you see someone talking slow and, slow and soft? Confessions. When someone like Elliot Spitzer or Bill Clinton or someone when they're confessing something really bad that they did, notice how they talk really slow and soft. I made a mistake. I should not have done it. They know, either consciously or subconsciously, that when they talk slow and soft, you as a listener feel sympathy for them. They are vulnerable and so you want to be forgiving of them. Now, obviously, you can misuse this, but I hope you will use it in the right context, which is to build a rapport with the audience. So, but let's just put a heart sign here because it makes it seem lovable. <laughs> let's move on to the next one, talking slow and fast. Now I gotta admit, this is my least favorite tool. It's not a very useful tool, but uh, you use this when you have something that you have to say, but you don't really, it's not important, no one really cares about it, so you just gotta get through it, you know? So, what's a good example? Uh, drug commercials. You know how they talk about how awesome Prozac is, and all of a sudden you got a little voiceover saying, that can cause headaches and migraines, it can cause your testicles to fall off, it's going to be bad for you, <laughs> children are going to die. They have to say it because it's a law, and so they have to say it, but it's not all that important. And so they talk softly but really fast, just to get through it. I like to call this the bridge, because it doesn't really matter in itself, you just use it to get from one place to the other. Now let's talk to the next one, talking loud and fast. This is my default, i got to admit, and uh, it can be very useful, it can be very powerful, because when someone talks loud and fast, it makes the whole thing seem very energetic. It makes it seem very exciting and powerful. Who are some people who talk loud and fast very frequently? Comedians. Notice that comedians, a lot of comedians, Bill Burr, George Carlin, they spend a lot of time talking loud and fast because they know that when they do that, the audience feels excited. It feels like this energy in the room is just clacking. And this is one way to project a lot of excitement and energy. If you want to get your audience excited, if you want them to laugh with you, if you want them to feel excited, this is one way to do it. Let's just call this energy. Which, of course, brings us to the last one, talking loud and slow. When you talk loud and slow, you project a lot of power. You seem very confident. Now, earlier we talked about politicians doing something bad. When they're not doing something bad, they're often talking loud and slow. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Notice how Reagan talked loud and slow when he said that. It makes him seem powerful, authoritative, it makes his message seem credible, and it makes it really stick out in your head. So let's call this power. Now we all have one of these default styles. I gotta I got admit, my default is to talk loud and fast. It's something I'm conscious of and trying to do less of it. But there is no one best style. In order to be a great public speaker, you have to realize that these are all tools and you have to use all of these tools to achieve the goals you want to use. For example, this is just one way that you can use all these tools. Let's say you come up here. 
you start off talking loud and fast because you want to get people excited. You want to get people listening to you. You want to build energy and excitement in the room. And then once you've done that, once people are listening to you, you transition. You start talking about the personal experience you had, something really sad that happened to you, and so you talk slowly and softly. And this helps the audience to connect with you. They feel like they get people like, like they've gotten to know you, and they feel like they're rooting for you. And then once you get to the main punchline of your speech, that's when you increase your volume again, you talk loud and slow. This is the point, the most important point of the speech, and so you want people to listen to you, you want them to believe in you, and you want them to do what you tell them to do. And so you use the power tone. If you look at the best public speakers out there, they use every single tool in this toolbox. Everyone has one style they prefer more than others, but they all use every single tool, because why would you not use a tool that's available to you? They also move between the quadrants as quickly, not as quickly, but uh, very frequently, because every time you move between quadrants, you get the audience interested in you again. They feel a shift in energy, they see that something has changed, and so you bring them back in. By using every tool in your toolbox, you can make the next speech go from good to great.